in my teenage years, as I was going through my own journey, you know, everybody's got their journey. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I like to put it that I was like a rebel without a cause, <laughs> had that rebellious personality. I did, to be perfectly honest, and I hope this is, doesn't sound irreverent or anything, I was um, I was a skeptic. And I, you know, challenged my own Judaism, you know, because I saw a lot of mediocrity. I saw conformity, herd mentality, you know, these words. Yeah. A skeptic of, of Yiddishkeit in general? Just or? everyone uh, following along. By nature, along. I was a questioner. I didn't just right. go along because someone said it. I had challenge. Skeptic, not necessarily in a bad way. I always questioned. I didn't just go because, you know, you see everybody like looking up. I, you also look up. I right. just I challenged it in my own way. I was not angry. I was not abused. I wasn't molested. Just in case you want to get that out of the just, way. Yeah, just check yeah. all the things. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, but I was a thinking person. I grew up in a very open-minded home, so it was a very Chabad home, a very religious Jewish home. Um, but there was also my parents were very open-minded. My father was a journalist, so it was a lot of free inquiry. We weren't. It wasn't a dogmatic home. There was mm -hmm. no dogma. So I explored in my own way, and I and I and I well, there were wonderful people in my life, beautiful, warm, fine, refined Jews, Hasidic Jews. You know, you met, I, I knew your grandfather, your great grandfather, Rabbi Yechonon Gordon. He was the mm -hmm. Gabbai in seven seventy. Yeah, and Numa is already an older man. And then his son Rabbi Nissen and his brothers were. My, Nissen was a colleague of my father's. So just <laughs> to pull a little. Uh, Connections here. Dra I'm name dropping. Of course. Yes, of course. And, 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 but I'm yeah. going to guess. So, so when my 17, 18, I used to, I had a chat, I was challenged by the fact, I was asking myself, is Judaism some type of mind control, like, you know, program or a cult? I don't want to use that word. Okay, sorry. I don't want don't to worry, insult. No, 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 no. I'm just, no, listen, we're, I'm yeah. not saying it like is. Some people say, you're not really, you're like an anti religious guy. And I say, yeah, but some of my best friends are religious Jews. You know? <laughs> right. so, so I don't want to insult anyone. Yeah, no, I wouldn't call it a cult because I didn't see it as being destructive. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. see people jumping off a mountain or drinking cyanide. Right. You know, but I did sometimes feel, is this something that, you know, you can't ask questions, they're threatened by any challenge. And uh, it took a while for me to come through that, but I'm gonna you know, make a long story short. It was ultimately the, the Hasidus, the Primi Satara, that's called the spirituality of Judaism that touched me deeply. It was like music. You know, you put on film and you can do it robotically. You just put it on. You keep Shabbos, eat kosher. You know, I did it all. I grew up with all of it, but it didn't always resonate. Like I said, okay, we're doing it. You know, I, I was not, nothing against it, but I would wonder, is this just some type of ritual, cultural thing? Because I didn't always see that everybody that was more religious was more refined. On the contrary, I right. sometimes find people that were so like almost OCD about the details were not necessarily nicer people. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were some of them were nice, but I didn't see it as synonymous. You know, you think if someone's more religious, more Shabbos, or they... You know, they check every uh, detail on Pesach. You think they're also more refined. That bothered me a lot, that dissonance between religiosity and uh, what they call digdu kal shal divrei you know, careful in every detail. But I don't see they're being careful in not hurting someone, in Avis Yisrael, for example, which is, we all know this problem. Mm -hmm. So this bothered me. But then when I came to the, the on staying the neshama of it, that Shabbos isn't just about not doing Lama Tes Malachas, the 39th. But Shabbos is about a day where you, an um, introspective day, you connect to your soul, you connect to God, you connect to your purpose in life. That changed everything. Because then when you, once you hear music, it's different. <laughs> it was the music of Judaism. And then I began to appreciate Lubavitcher Rebbe. Because then I understood, till the, the Rebbe was talking Torah, you know, he was talking Arashi, Zohar, Pirkei Ovis, Rambam, uh, the Rebbe's style. He was a big, great Talmud Chachem. So I appreciated his goodness, his scholarship, but the relevance, that was the big thing, the relevance. And then I began to realize, I remember the Rebbe giving a talk. It was a moment in my life. And um, he was talking about exactly what I was going through, the rebellion of young people. He was talking about the rebellion of the 60s. And the Rebbe said that people have made a mistake. They think that the rebellion in a young person is dangerous because it's disruptive, it breaks rules, challenges the status quo. You know, so it, it's dangerous to adults. So the Rebbe says, no, it's not dangerous. It's actually coming from the deepest part of the soul. He called it the fire of the neshama that, that is very frustrated because it wants to change the world and doesn't know how. So if adults don't appreciate it, they should get out of the way. But if they appreciate it, they should help with their seasoning and maturity and experience guide young people 
to create a spiritual revolution. That's the gist of it. Actually, in my book, Toward a Meaningful Life, I have a whole chapter, an entire chapter inspired by that talk, which touched me. And I said, wow, this is cool. You know, this is like a 75-year-old, a 70-year-old Hasidic rabbi. He's really with it. I knew people my own age that weren't as, let's call it, pioneering and exciting. I was excited by that. It could change the world, you know, in a good way. And it really touched me deeply. As a matter of fact, you know, Matis Yo, the singer, mm-hmm. when he wrote, he, did, he released an album called Youth. Mm-hmm. Yes. He was inspired by my chapter. We were really? Friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we came, he sat with me. He wanted to see all the sikhs, all the Rebbe's talks on youth, where I, from where I had derived that chapter. So it touched many people. 